my wonderful and fabulous Guarianza Guatemalensis and I do not see eye to eye 100%. The light training is working, but um, yeah, she has been on my radar just to see what the roots are doing. And one new growth, the roots are probably not going to get into the pot the way I would like it to this season. The other new growth is fine. But I'm not, mm. you can see that the roots are already a little bit longer than what I would prefer to have. So I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go in. I just feel, I don't think she needs a repot. Even when I filled the pot with calcium and magnesium and seaweed at 200 parts per million for the pre-soak, it was receding. So there is oxygen exchange in that pot. So what I'm doing is a little bit, I don't want to say risque, not trying to hook you to this video. I also don't want to kick myself though, further on in the future when I see roots coming out of the pot from that one lead. I've got my kit and caboodle ready. It is 2 p.m. in beautiful southern Spain. The fact that it is a little bit hazy works in our favor. That means I don't have to wait until the east side is in the shade. So I'm going to go for it and I hope you are up for it. And we'll see how long this takes. The Orchid Hobby, yin and yang, carnage versus beauty. A job well done. I have my hammer with me just in case we do need to uh, um, encourage the root system a little bit more. Like I said, she is not pot bound because of all the water I had to pour in. But I do want to try something. It's okay. Benaki. Benaki. You can tell it's not that hot of a day because the sun keeps going in and out and King is outside. Pulling her out worked for the Maasai Red. But it's not working for the Guatemalenses. King, you're not helping. <laughs> yes, that is calcium and magnesium and seaweed. Are you are you for sure? Are you real? Okay. So yes, I have him here with me. I'm not going to shut them in. We'll see how it goes. I'm just going to lightly around the perimeter do the hammer thing and then we'll try again there is give Let's see if i can tilt some of the lecker out I'm already seeing some beautiful roots. For a repot like this, everything applies just the same, keeping any kind of lecker falling on the root tips, trying to avoid that as best as possible. Sorry for any noise, I can't edit out. It's not like I can now stop what I'm doing. Oh, she's coming. I have to also be careful because this orchid is even though she has two leads, she's very weak in a joint. So I want to be careful. This is good though. This is good. <laughs> this is very good. King is making me nervous. But this, uh, well, in hindsight, a lot would have gone into the pot. But here we are. We can do some root ball cleanup and give her a new start. Off to the east side we go. Well, that took the decision-making process out of the way for me. The very weak joint has in fact separated by when I pulled her out of the pot, which I was trying to avoid, but at the end of the day, it could give me options so I can repot her back into her old pot by form of resituating her. So at least that decision was made for me. I was going to be loath to do it, 
but maybe this is the best thing that could have happened. Now, paraphernalia, dedication, your time, your support. Thank you so, so much for being here. I think it's a good time to clean the mask, huh? And I gotta make sure that my orchid stays damp while I do that. Oh, yes, it is a hazy day, but mm, it's nice and toasty. That's more acceptable. Now, with all the logistics out of the way and while I was cleaning the mask in the pot, I had an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work, if I need it, but I brought some wire. Yeah, I'm thinking of combining the rhizomes at the base, then somehow positioning them in the pot, wiring them in. <clears throat> Watch the space. <laughs> Now I'm going to keep the support in and the ties and everything for the time being. Keeping an eye on the root tips back there. There are some fresh roots down here. That is, they're probably not going to make it because of the weight of the lecker already cracking them. So we'll go in on a side where there's mainly dead roots. Yes, this is all a little bit cumbersome, but you know, we have all afternoon to do this. So let's relocate. Lower the edges a little bit so that there's something to look at. At first glance, you see a lot of dead roots, but then when you look closer, there are some live ones in here. So I'm gonna be mindful. Every root that goes into the repot that is alive, even if it does fail at a later stage, it's gonna help the orchid. So we'll just be a little bit more conservative instead of just attacking it like I had initially planned. When I saw what was coming out of the pot, I thought, go, 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 go. Because in order to reposition her with the rhizomes and doing all that stuff, we have to go in all the way. This is not an up pot, not a repot in the sense of, let's just say, we'll do what we need to do to create oxygen and reestablish the gas exchange in the pot. We have to go all the way in in order to do <laughs> joining the rhizomes. Oh boy. On the plus side, <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of fern roots. So this is your before shot. I'm gonna get on with it. Document as much as possible without being tedious about it. If anything untoward happens, I will stop and let you know and then continue. But this is gonna take me a hot minute. Okay, at this point in time, I do believe we have come to the part where at least I can see there are two rhizomes. They are completely separated, as mentioned previously, but I've left the support on because it kept the pieces together. I didn't need them wobbling around on me and going every which way uncontrollably. It was very difficult to move and maneuver around the root cleanup, which is, as far as I'm concerned, not quite done yet because I have these two lanky new growths and wherever you lay them down, they could get bruised and possibly fail. So I'm going to now, at this point, remove the support and all the wiring. Let's see. Let's get this off. 
And there's a whole cluster, a whole gaggle of goodness in there, but also badness. And I have a funny feeling, you know, the way things go, that some of the goodness in here belongs to the rhizome over here. So let's see how we can fandangle this. Let's do a dry run of positioning. <laughs> you know, like when you go skydiving, you're on those little boards with rollers on them. That's what we're doing here now. A dry run of how I want to put the rhizome together. Oh, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this a lot. One overlapping the other. Or the, no, 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 one overlapping the other because of the root tips to the right. Oh, but she is so heavy. I wonder if she's gonna let me do this. Meanwhile, keeping an eye on the new growth right there, not to kink it. She's a tough orchid, but oh, those growths are so tender. Huh? <laughs> Lying down, it's perfect. If anybody walks into my kitchen now, they're gonna get a shock because the lecker that fell off easily is now just dirty in a five liter huge pot where I make chicken soup in. <laughs> Filled with lecker, dirty lecker that I was yet to clean and process. Ah! <laughs> if somebody walks in now, they're just gonna go, oh my word. Oh, 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 gotta be careful with the root tips. So if that's, let's raise her up again and see how that would work. I want to make sure that the two new growths are still aligned in the same growing direction. Otherwise it gets even more difficult with this orchid. I'm going to wire her right here as well. I hope all this isn't shot, but right here where I'm crossing two growths, I'm going to wire her there as well. The thing with this is now though, I have to make sure that the rhizome doesn't lift too far down that didn't even make sense, that the rhizome doesn't tilt too far down with the growth that is leading off to the left of the screen. Otherwise we have an imbalance in the pot. So what you can't see is I'm shuffling the pseudobulbs at the top in a different way so that the rhizome lowers itself. I'm gonna use these two here Hopefully all this is in shot to tie them together. There we go. Now this is the idea to get her into the pot. The new growth growing in the same direction. The rhizome level. So I don't think I'm going to be fussing anymore. Even though there's, like I said, some badness in this cluster here. I'm going to get the new pot and what I'm going to do is dunk her and flush her and see if any debris falls out. Oh, can you give me a like? Would you like the video for me, please? I would so appreciate that. Because in German, we have a word, the troubleshooting here to get this orchid to do what I want it to do, go back into the same pot. That is called ad hoc troubleshooting, problem solving while in the middle of doing something un poco complicado desde mi punto de vista. <laughs> A little complicated from my point of view. So I would really appreciate a like. And if you haven't subscribed, yes, well, this is not unusual on the patio. This happens quite often <laughs> that I have to do these kind of projects. And if you're up for that kind of thing, when it comes to orchids, subscribe to the channel and don't miss another video. Now, right at the beginning, I was contemplating wiring her into the pot as well. But I'm going to use the support and I hope that's good enough because if it's not good enough, I'm taking her out and then I will set the wire. But I think we're going to be okay. Yes, you heard me correctly. If this potting up doesn't work the way I want it to to keep her stable, I will do it all again. The leka I've just poured in has been soaking in RO water for over a year. 
untouched. This is the good stuff from many, many years ago. And it had a parts per million of 620. Now that sounds shocking and a lot, but it's been in that water over a year. So I'm not concerned that this is in any way, shape or form bad lecker that hasn't leached properly. I could have changed the water and, you know, brought the parts per million down, but we're talking a huge orchid. She'll be fine. And because I did a lot of chopping here, normally I don't like to do this because it takes a lot of RO water to do it, but this orchid is special to me. Whew, not like it's a waste because it's good for her. I'm just gonna dunk her in clean water, see if I can dislodge any of the debris that didn't come out with a sprayer and being so close to the catch tray. Just a little something, something. There we go, a little bit came out. I'm really mindful of, of course, where the new growths will be positioned in the pot. How much can I get out of this repot in the coming years? How can I use the diagonals to my advantage? Etc. Etc. It seems like no matter how I position her the way she is right now, I may be coming up against maybe two more years again. If I'm lucky, that is. This lead right here could give me two years. This lead could give me two years. Either way, it would be nicer to have a bigger pot, but that's not gonna happen. Cut off a back bulb or two. That's not gonna happen. We can do that maybe on the next repot. I can take two bulbs off and then we've got two or three new growths to work with. Let's get the microfibers up a tad more. At this point in time, she looks a little low in the pot, but actually I kind of like it. It's like a millimeter or two where I'm focusing on. Oh, I can let go, good. I have to. From what I could tell, she didn't shift. That's great, my third hand worked. <laughs> oh, for now. I have some explaining to do. I'm not quite done yet, but I'll explain what I'm thinking as I'm doing, as I'm filling in the blanks here, okay? I'll be, promise it could be interesting. <laughs> Okay, let me explain. As mentioned, I would like to have two years out of her. I'm not gonna get three, but this looks very close to the edge. This is the growth that could give me problems with my long-term plan. This one, I think is gonna be okay for two years, even though this one was up against the edge when we started. However, I may have grace here because, let me show you, and if you encounter similar issues and are trying to do some predictions, nothing is guaranteed, but if you're trying to do some predictions, here's what I'm looking at. It could be that the next growth after this one is gonna come out this side, and then we may have another growth coming out this way. All right, so that's our two years, because you see the back of the rhizome? So we've got the back of the rhizome. One growth is towards the right side of the rhizome. Then the new growth comes out, makes a rambling rhizome, but it's more to the left of the rhizome. Then the next new growth is more to the right of the rhizome. Here we have to the left of the rhizome. So that is why I'm guesstimating the next one's gonna come out here, come up against the pot, and yeah, we're gonna maybe run into issues because then after that, if it continues along this trajectory, the next one after that will come bang smack up against the edge of the pot. But because the orchid is lower in the pot, those roots would still go into the pot, which was my starting issue with the other lead that I was not entirely sure if I'm gonna get roots into the pot if they come crawling out. Because if that happens in my climate, I have no humidity to speak of. And then those roots are shot. For a big orchid like this, the roots are fundamental. Let's have a look at this lead. Thank you if you're still here with me. You are appreciated. You have no idea how much, but you really are appreciated. So we have a lead of the rhizome. It's offset to the right, the rhizome. It's offset to the left. 
the rhizome and it wanted to go left again but in this case the light training kicked in so it was left and then grew like offset to the right but clearly the growth comes from the bottom left of that rhizome so what to expect here it can come off to the right that would give me one year and then it can grow off to the left that will give me two years and that is how i am working with these orchids that are like this that are a little bit cumbersome to somehow try and predict where their growths are growing the key word being try <laughs> It is never a guarantee, but anyway, the repot is done. All that's left for me now is to put her back in her place, flush her very, very often. And how sturdy is she? She's pretty solid in there, but you know what? I'm just gonna use the wire anyway, because she may be solid, but her handler may be a little bit on the wobbly side. <laughs> and we don't wanna break anything off. So no risk. No ifs, no buts, the wire is there. We're gonna use it and eventually, if need be, pull in the new growth into this little cluster as well. Oof, I'm so happy this is done. In a way, when I unpotted her, I thought, yeah, you didn't have to, but the assumption would have also been gnawing in my head, constantly concerned about roots going into the pot. And you know what, if I have to do this again in another year, because one growth, maybe a lead starts to break off in a direction that I didn't expect. It really doesn't matter because if we have to do it again in a year, it's a good thing to repot orchids because that means they've done well through the period of having been repotted and needing another repot. It's all good if that needs to happen because you see, here's another eye. If that lead activates, we've got one direction of growth. So this is where the light is coming from. This is the part I'm encouraging. Everything else is back up. Let me tell you something. Even though my initial regret of, ah, why did you do this? I had so many other things to do this afternoon. Speaking of time check, time check, it's 4.30 p.m. That is an hour and a half overdue for Siliano to come out for his free flight. And that was also in the back of my mind. And then there was a song, not a lullaby. <laughs> but there was a song in my head. I wasn't thinking of Siliano. I wasn't thinking of time running away. I was humming in my mind, if you're gonna do it, do it right, right. If you're gonna do it, do it right. And that's why I took my time and here we are. So if you are here as well to the end, I so appreciate that support. Thank you so, so much. Your time is precious to me. You are precious to me. Can I just one more time remind you to hit the thumbs up, please? And once more, just ask you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Siliano, I'm coming.